about the Cowboys and the disaster that was Sunday night in San Francisco. Yesterday, Monday, Dan, Dan Orlovsky, did not hold back with his views on Dak and the offense. That's the worst performance of Dak Prescott's tenure as a Dallas Cowboy. And, and for anybody who wants to try to tell me that this was a line of scrimmage game, don't. This was a quarterback game. San Francisco's was galaxies better, significantly better than Dak Prescott. Offensively, it's, the, the word that stood out was archaic. That's what the offense looked like for Dallas last night. This was a completely outclassed football team from top to bottom by San Francisco. And if we're being honest... We cannot say that the Cowboys are Super Bowl contenders legitimately after what we witnessed last night. All right, so there's a lot to unpack there. And the first part of it was he, plus, he placed the majority of the blame at the feet of the quarterback for that game. Jeff, agree or disagree? Disagree. I mean, listen, I said this last week. The 49ers are a much better football team than the Dallas Cowboys. The, the 49ers played an excellent football game. The Cowboys did not, and it just showed the discrepancy between the two rosters. Well, you and I sat here and argued about Dak could not – I don't care what quarterback was, was on that field that night. They ain't carrying that team to a whim. Greenlaw is having a freaking heyday. You've got Warner balling. And listen, by the way, he's got no control of the ball getting punched out by, on, the, on the sideline there early in the game. And once the game got into that mindset and they're up 21-7 – Katie Barr's door, but it's coming. Everybody, they are going to turn this thing into a rough shot game. That's what happened. You're everybody blaming Dak. We everybody was complimenting Mike McCarthy. Oh, he's going to be a. They're going to be a more of a run, slow this thing down. To, that's all well and good everybody. until you play an explosive football team like the 49ers, who have explosive players all over the office. Boo, boo, boo. You're down. All of a sudden, you're like, oh my god, Dak's going to bring them yeah. back. Like this is. This, this, and, and by the way, Dan, there is no such thing as a quarterback game and not a line of scrimmage game. Every game is a line of scrimmage game. That's straight trash, too. Two points on there. <laughs> I mean, he's right. The, the, yeah, the truth please. of the matter is every game is a line of scrimmage game. You, if it is, if it's um, even at the line of scrimmage, then you move on to other people. Right. Uh, um, Purdy wouldn't play nearly as well if he was down by a bunch of points and Thank the you. Cowboys are getting after him. So that's fair. It's Since I've been on this show, I've done a lot of Dak defending and yeah. supporting. So I feel ridiculous stepping out here now and trying to defend him. So he did not play well. That's correct. Yeah. But arguing that it was a quarterback game or that McCarthy came through, the, the Cowboys defense came through, and the reason why they lost is because Dak Bellick came no. short, that's a hard argument to make. I, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I don't understand why it has to be one or the other. Like, you could say they weren't going to, he wasn't going to lift them to a victory over the Niners. That's fine. He could lift them to still being in the game in the third quarter. Like, I, I, so I listened to Dan Orlovsky say, this is the worst performance of Dak Prescott's career. And my first thought was, what's the best? What's his big signature game where he came in and overcame everything and said, like, I'm putting this on my back and delivering a win because I'm that guy. And yeah. it's hard to think of it. And this is year eight. Like, we want to talk about Jordan Love, right? Like, uh, like first year as a starter. Not and even game eight. Yeah. And I, I, no, your, your point is good. We, like, I feel like we're starting to get to the point where, and, and I, I mean, I've been with you. Like, I've sat here and, and, and defended Dak Prescott. When people would sit here and say, Carson Wentz is better, I would say, no, Dan Orlovsky. Carson Wentz is not better than Dak Prescott. Like, I, I thought he would ascend. And I just wonder if this is a player that right. is at his level okay. and isn't going to rise above So it. if he is at his level, whatever level you guys want to put him at, he is a performing quarterback in the NFL that you will win with and because of, not in spite of. He's not He's not like this guy that hey, we're just going to win around him. You're winning because of his but performance. Win what? Right? Okay. You're not going to compete with the best team in your conference. I agreed, agreed. what are you doing? But you also have to have, like, Cooks has got to step up. Gallup has to step up. Pollard has to – like, there are other you – you let go of Schultz, by the way. Terrible decision on that side. And so you're looking at – and everybody points to one player. The bottom line is on this offense, if it's going to be productive, those other players have to step up. And when you look at the best quarterbacks, man, Brock Purdy is in the MVP conversation, yeah. not because he's making so many more throws, because Ayuk takes it yard. Samuel takes it yard. McCaffrey takes it yard. Tittle takes a yard. My God, like, 
Some other players at some point have to make big plays for you as well. I'm just saying don't put it all to one player. Make sure that we pass this on to everyone. He's, right, not, not, he's not in the MVP conversation because he's, he's making so many more. But he is making more throws. Agreed. Like he Agreed. is. And, and he's, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm using him as an example of other players And you want to talk about Cooks and all these other players. Around. There's a reason a quarterback gets $40, $50 million a year. You're supposed to be that guy. You're supposed to be the guy with the oh. superhero cape on. You are. I'm sorry. That's what comes with the territory. Well, let's go to another place. And, and because Dan talked about this and Rex talked about it, he used the word archaic for the offense. He used the word archaic for what they're trying to run. No motion, no creativity, incredibly predictable. Those kinds of things. Is that what that offense looks like to you? It certainly looked like that yesterday against the, um, or yeah, two days ago 49ers, against the 49ers. Yeah. Yes. However, that's the contradiction is it's weird to say that we blame Dak, but the offense is archaic. If right. it's archaic, then the quarter, there is no quarterback that can make an archaic offense. Right. Like, uh, well, so we're spreading the blame around. Which, yes, what no. do you think of the whole idea? Because I'm asking you, is this a, a Mike McCarthy? Because Rex sat here yesterday and said they miss Kellen Moore. That's what he said. Yeah, I mean, I, I think different games call for different types of offense. And to be able to play a Mike McCarthy-style game where you're playing a lesser opponent, opponent and you're up by a bunch of points is possible. But right. when you're down by a bunch of points, you need to shift into Kellen Moore mode. And that's what being a coach is. It's changing. So once that happens, if they don't have motions in their offense, if they don't have complex schemes, because you did see there were lots of easy throws for a party in that game because of exactly. motion, because of shift, yes. because of challenges. To be able to do that for Dak, I think that takes some off of him. That takes some pressure off him. You don't have to be great nearly as often. And I think that's what's special about Purdy is they don't ask him to be great all that often, which is why when they do ask him to make a tough throw, a tight window throw across the middle field, he's able to do it every now and then. And, and, I, and I will say that Dak to be great this year. Like the, the wins they've had have been easy wins where the defense right. scores touchdowns. Plays, and, absolutely. Yeah, this the Sunday was the, the game. Like, right. hey, man, you got to be better tonight. Right. Okay, my, my, my point There's no way that. McCarthy called that interception they threw way down the field, overshot the guy by 10 yards. Okay, There's no way. Back on Get Up with sneaky big news, and I hate it. The Ooh. Jets will be without their right tackle, Elijah Vera Tucker, who was their best offensive lineman for the rest of the season. He tore his Achilles against the Broncos. It's the second straight year that he suffers a seasoning injury in Denver. It, it is just a devastating blow for a He's team. A beast. That was just sort of stabilizing where they were now after the injury to Aaron Rodgers. And this is the, the area of their team which is the most questionable and they have the least depth. Yeah. So I, why not turn to an interior offensive lineman? And again, Vera Tucker has been playing tackle. He's played everything except he, center. He, correct. He, he can play everywhere. He was drafted as a guard. But either yeah. way, the point is, can you describe what this means for the Jets' chances of writing a ship Ooh. that feels like it has sort of steadied a little bit? Yeah, no, it's significant. And listen, anytime you're talking about a guy, not only where he plays, he can play anywhere, but the, the level he plays with and how he, he helps everybody around him play better, the visual, the conversations he's having with guys. But And you're talking about Becton, who came out of the game. If you, I mean, this offensive line is not in a great shape anyway. To lose your best offensive lineman is devastating, especially when you're trying to write Zach Wilson uh, in the ways that he's struggling. Every quarterback is a little bit better with a great offensive line. Amen. Good quarterbacks become great. Great quarterbacks become Hall of Famers. Yep, Bad quarterbacks have the chance of being mediocre with a good offensive line. This offensive line has not been great, but they got a little bit worse here, and there's no hope of him coming back this season. Unless he I just heard on. you say we carry him, which I appreciate. That's that. back yeah, to that's back. Great. I mean, so the Achilles yeah. with the Jets. I mean, the, the, this is Rodgers four games into four plays into the season, and now this it's a it's a devastating blow. The game is mean, and, and there's no question about it. Like this is what happens. But yeah, for a team that it really can't afford to lose any more of its best offensive players, right. if there's a formula for the Jets, it's it's what we saw Sunday with Brees Hall running mm. the ball and on all that. But that's going to require. You know, an offensive line, as I've learned sitting across the table from Jeff Saturday <laughs> for years. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's a tough. Uh, they're they're not their margin for error at this point with Rodgers down is not is not very good. So the question, I guess, becomes, and you see their schedule. We, we've talked a lot. Certainly, all the Jet fans have talked a lot about their first six games of their season, which ends this coming Sunday in a game against the Eagles. I've said all along, if they come out of it two and four, they have a chance. You see, the schedule gets markedly easier as they go forward. I'm not sure you see. Yeah, I mean, you, got, you got two. You got two. Well, you got the Giants. I mean, the, you got the yeah. Raiders. You got a couple of games you might be. Able, my point is. Chargers it's a lot more fun than Dolphins. playing Kansas City and, 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 and whatever. The point of the question is, can this Jets team, with Zach Wilson starting to look certainly better, I don't know exactly how we describe what we saw from him on Sunday, can this team in an AFC that does not look as loaded as we expected make a run to the playoffs? Only if their defense plays out of their mind. 
I don't think it's going to happen. Their defense, this is not going to be based on Zach Wilson and the offense. If Brees Hall can get going, they can, but their defense is going to have to be opportunistic. They're going to have to score points. They're going to have to block kicks, return kick, whatever it is, they're going to have to add in to what this team is. This is based strictly on how well their defense can perform. Dominique, playoffs for the Jets this year, yes or yes? Uh, I'm going to go with nah. No. Nah, nah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Greedy. I want to say yes. But should I they seriously? Happy. We have the news about Justin Jefferson today. Seriously, should they be trying to trade for Kirk Cousins? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think he should be on the table. Trading for Kirk Cousins is he's only got one year left on his contract, so mm -hmm. it does not tie you to him if you want to go Correct. to Rodgers next right. year. I'm not sure how it works with their cap, but I Kirk Cousins okay. is a is an upgrade, and he knows how to throw it to his best player. I'm, I guarantee you, Garrett Wilson. Garrett, Garrett Wilson's going to get a lot. Remember, Rodgers gave all that cap money back when, right. when he took a pay cut right before the season. They could Cousins is not going to be. Right. Uh, you, you can afford him, right? It would upset Making the Apple 10 million this year. a little bit. The question is, is it, well, Rodgers wouldn't like it. There'd be a lot of stuff, I think, that would happen there. The question is, how would that play? It's an upgrade, at least in the short term, but the very short term. And how much of an upgrade is questionable? That's a, if you, it's win, a tough if you one. win two games out of those, you would you would get after it. It's got to be you, 500 by week 12, and then Aaron it. is coming back. You're in it. Aaron oh, is coming oh, back week 13. I agree. Yes? I'm in. If they're I'm 500, in. Jeff is coming in. Back. You in? Coming back. No, man. Build the Achilles. Are, Build it. Put yeah. some cushions under the heel. Line. Lift that thing up. Put a boot on. Whatever you got to do, let it's, him throw with it. It's going to happen. 17 points last night. They didn't play a bad game defensively at all. You should win a game like that. So when you hear him saying that, what does that tell you? That's called leadership. I mean, it's on the defensive. Yeah. Like, that's what you do, especially when you're one of the veterans. You're one of the best players on the team in Jair Alexander. That's what you say. Saying that the offense has to play better, they know that. But we are yeah. in a situation where the toughest thing about watching that game was it felt like they were trying to protect Jordan Love from making mistakes. That's right. But he's, they still couldn't stop him from turning the ball over three times. So from a defensive side, that's stressful. Like, please, put up numbers. If you're going to turn the ball over, put up some numbers for us to defend. There's a part of me, speaking of defending, that wants to defend Jordan Love because I think of him as a rookie. But you made yeah. the very good point earlier. I shouldn't do that. Yeah, he's not a rookie. Like, he got all the um, time to sit behind Aaron Rodgers that we hope that most quarterbacks get. He should not be making these type of mistakes at this point in his career. I do think there's something to be said for the idea of everyone he's – literally everyone he's throwing to is a rookie or a second-year player, right? The running backs have a little more experience, but the receivers and the tight ends are all young right. around a young quarterback. And I think that's what Jair Alexander is getting at. Look, over the last three games, that offense has had one good quarter. It was the fourth quarter against the Saints where they yeah. came back and won that game. And but they, they thought they would build on that. They were I was at that game. They were so fired up about Jordan Love and the way he led them back in that game. Then they fall flat four days later against the Lions. And then they fall flat 11 days later against the Raiders. Obviously, it's a reminder that progress is not always linear. I, I think this looked like their game plan. I, you know, what, yes. whatever this this was like what they went and they went in with a mindset. We're going to go you know, ground and pound against the Raiders. We're going to make we're going to our run game. Obviously, Aaron Jones not playing was a huge uh, setback for that. Dylan comes in and does, you know, he, he plays OK. He's good. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. that looked like what they were trying to do. And if you're going to play a throttled down offense, yeah. kind of what your point was, if you're going to try to protect the quarterback, quarterback then you're going to have to be more efficient in those and your quarterback has to truly protect the ball I'm with you I think you got to take kind of take the gloves off with Jordan look push the ball down the field you have these big receivers go make plays but the other side of that is Watson has to like Watson's got to convert that catch to a touchdown right you got to go score it, it, the, the one of the interception come back for that ball you're a foot taller than that guy and again you see the ball in the air at some point you got to play maybe you get a pass interference but all of those things to Dan's point, are rookie or second-year player type mistakes, right? They haven't done it enough. They have to do it together. But those plays will be monumental for Jordan Love and the progression we all think he's making by those guys making those. Yeah, game plan looked like they wanted to win the game 17-13. That's right. Instead, they lose yeah. it 17-13 because he throws three picks. They were play. still in the game with three interceptions. And I think yeah. Jeff's point is a big one is they need a little bit more support from somewhere. If it's not going to come from Jordan Love, somebody else has to make that play.